Good evening, everyone. Today is a new patch, 923. We're gonna dig straight into it because why would I do an intro, right? Let's just go talk about what changed in the patch. So, first of all, in the traits, Glacial Stun got a little nerf on uh, four units and on six units. On four units is decrease of 5%, and on uh, six units is decrease of 10%. It doesn't really make a difference that much in four glacials. The jump between 20 and 35% is still very decent, so it still feel that the, the, the glacial stun is still happening. So it's more like we're just gonna make it a little bit less impactful, but it's basically almost the same since all the creatures that you want to have glacial they're attacking so often, like let's say Olaf with the Berserker trait that is also like spreading around um the glacial and hits many times. Asha glacial, Twitch glacial. Ezreal with the fast attack speed, everything there applies so many glacial stuns that probably the 5% is um, minuscule. It's like very, very small, it doesn't really matter that much. So let's just jump to the next one, which is the light. The light nerf is a little bit more interesting because it can either be a nerf or a buff at the same time. Depends what is happening in the game. Because right now how light has worked is that whenever someone from the light composition was dying right it healed the other creatures that that are light for their maximum hp right now when a creature when a champion or a creature depends if it may be a Yor yorick um ghoul will heal when they die they heal for the maximum amount of hp they have instead so let's say when a nasus free star is dying he's gonna heal way much more than in the previous iteration but let's say when a one star soraka will die will heal but a very small amount to the other creatures so it's like a nerf and a buff at the same time i would perceive it more as a nerf because it directly nerfs vein 3 since uh she will heal less than in the previous patch but in general lights are still very powerful if you have a good good, good light composition they might still face roll um against everything basically now when it comes to the ocean that's something i don't feel like was necessary but ocean got a huge buff when it comes to 4 ocean, 5 mana is actually a very decent buff. You, ha you have to take into account that 5 mana per 4 seconds is like half, a half an attack. So basically, um, it's an insane buff to every single ocean creature that you can have. It's sometimes even a 1 second faster for an ultimate with just the buff of the 5 mana. So it's really insane. And for the 6 oceans... Then it becomes one full auto attack because it's 10 mana difference. That's even bigger. That's that's like insane. The buff to 6 ocean is really insane and makes the, the trait powerful enough to be a carry, right? Because 60 mana per 4 seconds is just viable to make anything ult. At level 2 Tarik with ocean buff basically becomes almost invincible because he will be uh, ulting so often, of course. If you have also items that will heal him, like in example Warmog. But in general, there are combinations with Ocean that will make it very insanely powerful. And remember that you can have 6 Ocean on a water map. Or if you get uh, a Lux that is also Ocean. So it's not easy to build. But in general, I predict that 4 Ocean will be one of the top tier compositions. It was already very good. Now with this buff, it becomes even better. Especially since uh, some of the, let's say ocean creatures like Nautilus, an example, find found their way into the metagame uh, since so many people are now leaving a carry alone in the backline and Nautilus will always hit that carry. So Nautilus is one of the best uh, creatures right now in the game to play. And when it comes to the Shadow, it's a decent nerf. It felt that Shadow is just way too powerful. It felt like uh, an insane Imperial buff that you had that it could just do way faster and was more reliable. So, and a shadow buff, a shadow nerf is definitely justified and having it, let's say, reduced by 15% on four shadows is okay. Its shadow is still very playable and it's still one of the best traits in the game, uh, but it's not as insane as it was before. Warden, with the buff by 25% on two wardens and 25% uh, on four warden, broke the moment when they actually become way, way more useful. And with the buff to some of the creatures from Wardens uh, itself 
and the ocean buff as well. So Nautilus, Trash, uh, and Malphite, which perfectly fits into mages as well, um, makes Wardens now very playable, and that just makes almost every single ocean player happy. Now, when it comes to very important change in the game, three star ability scaling was changed, and now practically almost every single creature that is a three star has insane change to the damage or to the effect that they do. So in tier 2, Jax has a bump of 100 additional damage. So it's 250 to 200, 450. LeBlanc uh, becomes a really insanely powerful single target uh, unit as well with 800 damage. Uh, Nico has a buff... Well, okay, Nico is not a good example. But Syndra has a huge jump as well from 350 to 600 instead of 575. 500, 525. And remember, this all scales with AP, so a 3-star Syndra is a definitely one of the best carries right now. Uh, and it's way easier to build them if no one else is building a Syndra. So take that into consideration. Set 1 was kind of hard to build all the 3-stars. Uh, but in set 2, with the smaller um, champion pool and smaller amount of creatures from every single tier, it's way easier to find a niche. That you can build three stars so if you see that in your lobby no one is building a syndra or there's just people just sold syndras because they're pivoting from syndra to something else that's a good signal that you might actually do a level three because of that um so all the creatures that are listed here basically are very not are very carry like able let's say when you have a three star even trash like with the insane shield that he has might be a, cru a crucial part to your uh, composition right now, especially with Ocean Buff, and the same goes to Syndra. Volibear has an insane damage as well, 850 damage. To a single target, of course, but it's 850 damage. And it's also easy to build him, uh, the Volibear. Now, when it comes to the Tier 3, the, what most goes to mind is uh, what I already mentioned, Nautilus is insanely powerful. Six seconds stun, basically it's like a easier Leona to build right because it's a it's a tier three so it's decent it has decent stun already on uh two star which is four seconds but if you if you manage to make him a three star and not not only he's one of the <laughs> tankiest creatures in the game with so much hp and he's a warden that he will be able to land multiple ults that each stun six seconds and deal 400 damage by the way so nautilus is one of those creatures that might be very contested and remember there's only 16 of him in the pool but in general if you can make a free star Nautilus, it's very worth. So if you if you scout properly, scouting in, in current set is very important. You need to constantly check what other people are building, what they are selling. And if you have that knowledge, you're going to be a better player. Now, when it comes to the other creatures, Kindred and Scion have an insane damage now on three stars as well. 150 buff um, to Kindred and 200 uh, buff to Scion. All, both of them on... 3 star are insane, insanely powerful. I was dealing with Cyan with 4 Shadow and a 3 star Cyan today. 2k damage ults. 2k damage to each target. And it's like a cone. So Cyan is, is a potential potential carry. Kindred is a potential carry. Ezreal with buffs to his um, own stats because now he uh, has less mana, which is 30 mana instead of 40 and better um better cast tie into his skill a three star Ezreal is insanely powerful as well uh, especially since you don't need to give him basically mana items but just attack speed items so like rage blade which also buffs his ap it, he might be one of the best creatures right now in the game but his ults just uh, his ults sometimes are just missing so that's the problem you need to learn to how to position him well to benefit from building like a corridor on the map so he doesn't miss his ults. But in general, Ezreal is really fantastic. Now, when it comes to Aatrox, if you play light, building a 3-star Aatrox happens a lot, and he got above by 250 damage right now to his ult. So he's nuts as well. Now, when it comes to general champion balance, we have seen Ivern and Maokai get a little bit nerfed, and that's fine, because both of those creatures... Um, are just insanely powerful early game if you get them upgraded and they have a fantastic trait so a, a small nerf on them is uh is justified and they are still very playable at three stars uh but they also got nerfed here uh, a bit but you have to remember if you play three stars even maokai 
you most likely also play another woodland and then you pe like you just copy another three star so it's they're still insanely uh insanely powerful nasa's got a little bit of a nerf because at three star which is also very uh easy to build uh for a light player um the bonus was just too big too tanky he's still one of the best tanks in the game especially when you play light uh but um he's l considerably less powerful right now with the 15 ap damage per second uh, on his ultimate and that's about it now when it comes to talia she got a very good no uh, buff sorry a very good buff the five mana here makes a difference especially on a uh on a water map she starts with 50 mana so you can instantly start with a talia ult dig in the game if you put her on a water spot so if you put her on a water spot she starts the game ults someone and most likely a carry and brings them to you which is a really fantastic opener if you consider her um just an initiator of the fight you can also build her with mana items like um shojin and uh rage blade and she deals considerable damage especially if you have a mage trait and she double double casts so if you have a free star Talia, which is very easy to do nowadays, um, she's a considerable threat, even when she, when she has no items, but she's worth it, especially since the, the stun got the buff by half a second to two seconds. Now we can constantly uh, vein a small nerf to a free star vein, which is fine by 1%, and that's about it. Everything else is irrelevant here. Uh, Vladimir got a little bit of a nerf, but he's still very playable, still very powerful, and his healing effect is like really insane. Especially since if you if you can make him a three star and remember Ocean got a buff so he got a buff instead uh, he got a buff as well uh, he's a great tank in general. Great items on Vladimir are uh, Death Cap, um, anything defensive, but in general anything that buffs uh, his AP also scales with his healing, so it's insanely powerful. He doesn't need mana items because he's tanky, so he takes a lot, he takes a lot of damage to generate mana, and he gets. Uh, his mana also from ocean so just consider putting him on a lot of ap or just items that will uh be making him more tanky like an example iceborne gauntlet uh frozen heart and stuff like that tier two malzahar got a little bit um a nerf to his minions which is okay uh but doesn't really change much in in general because it's more about the fact that he just spawns them so many times they'll be still all over the place uh, Rek'Sai uh, got a small nerf on the three star, a little bit buff on the one star, so that's almost irrelevant because what the most important thing is what a two star is doing, and that didn't change. Skarner's mana got a little bit buffed by ten, which is one auto attack on two star, which is relevant. Skarner becomes significant, significantly more tanky because of that, um, so that's a good thing for Skarner, especially since his armor got also buffed by five percent. Five uh, in general. People dismiss Skarner, but in my opinion, he's an easy two-star, and if you can fit him into a carry Ash, which is, in my opinion, very good in current mid game, where you will see a lot of new king champions like Syndra, Brand, uh, and Shadow characters, Crystal might be one of the answers um, to the game plan, and if you see a lobby that is focusing on mages and on, uh, and on Shadows, building crystal carries is actually very important so I'm not talking here about crystal looks but a a scanner that also goes into Tarik later with a ash carry that has most likely a death blade a rage blade and hand of justice or let's say bloodfirster is a very considerate threat uh, to an entire uh, team and she will just carry on her own if she will be able to heal the damage that he's, she's getting, and she's only getting maximum 100. She's a great counter to Vagar, she's a great counter to Brandt, she's a great counter to Syndra, all the new king champions. Trash ability got a little bit of a buff, uh, we know that already. Uh, Yasuo got a little bit of a nerf, whatever. Uh, then from what I was saying, Azrael got a buff, which is very considerate and making him one of the best champions. So now with 30 mana, it kind of makes sense to put Seraph on him, but in general, in my opinion, it's worth more to put attack speed on him instead of Seraph because he will get the mana anyway. If he's a two star, he needs three auto attacks to cast an ult. But when he's um, full mana, he still needs to attack once. So basically, you don't ever want to double Seraph him because he still will have to one uh, to make one auto attack. But if you 
give him a Seraph, he still will need to one uh, to make a one auto attack. So if you just give him a Rage Blade instead, he will get to a point when he will be attacking so fast that he will be ulting faster than with a Seraph anyway. The only difference, of course, is that with a Seraph, he will be starting the fight with a cast at the beginning of the fight. Um, tier 4, Ash got a little bit of buff to attack speed. As I explained before, Ash might be very good in current my game. Brand ability damage, uh, irrelevant buff nerf because it's 1 star and 3 star. Um, the bounces got this are still the same on a 2 star, although the additional bounce on a 1 star is a considered buff. Malphite got a buff by 50 HP, important, because Malphite was always a little bit out of paper. Uh, it felt like out of paper, you know? Uh, and 1 star was easily killed, but uh, 2 star Malphite right now with 4 Wardens, which is something that is, is going to be played very often, uh, seems to be very good. Olaf's mana got nerfed to 90. Uh, in general, I feel like Olaf is one of those champions that is very powerful, and especially on lower elo, uh, elo, he will be still the biggest threat to all of the lobbies because he just slap three items on him and he does his work, right? Especially when you have Glacial as well. Uh, so this gives more time for people to CC him and kill him. So if you're good at positioning and playing your uh, utility from your, from your team, you have more time to actually... Um, destroy him before he goes off, which is a considerable amount because 15 mana is in one and a half attack. Um, then we have Yorick, which is also good nerfed. His ghouls have 250 less HP uh, on a two star, which is the most important aspect, right? 250 is a considered nerf, and the big, big nerf, the same goes for the attack speed, good less from 0 0.8 to 0 0.7. They're still very powerful. Yorick is still one of the best creatures in the game, uh, but it's a considered nerf but still a crucial part of lights, and you can play Silver Yorick in almost every single comp. And when it comes to tier 5, Singed got nerfed by 100 HP, which is fine. Um, you try to not make him a target anyway, especially if he's a 1-star. If he's a 2-star, he's mo way more tanky, and that 100 HP, of course, scales. But it's still he's still very tanky at a 2-star. At a 1-star, you don't want him to be uh, targeted anyway. Uh, but the ability uh, that he deals... He did his way less damage on, as a 2-star, 400 instead of 500. That's a very big big nerf to Singe, but it's still more about the poison than the damage itself. So consider that a known factor, because if you play poison, you're still going to play Singe. Singe is one of the best characters in the game. Tarek got buffed by 50 HP, the same thing as a Malphite. I think Tarek is now um, highly playable, uh, because Wardens got playable, and Tarek just works so well with Ash. And as I explained, Ash might be one of the most... Um, needed characters in some lobbies, uh, which might be just worth it in a lot of cases. Now, when it comes to items, big nerf to Frozen Heart and Iceborne Gauntlet by 10%, but still, Iceborne Gauntlet is a very pliable uh, item on cloud maps, which says a lot about the quality of the item, since even with a 10% mana decrease, sorry, 10% slow decrease on it, he's still playable. And it's not even about the damage that you get because they attack faster, but it's about the mana. These, the creatures now are getting more mana because they attack more often. But in general, Iceborne Gauntlet is still very good. Ionic Spark got nerfed from 100 to 90 HP. Yeah, sorry, 90 damage. It's like, if someone wants to play Ionic Sparks, he's going to play two or three of them anyway. So, the 10 damage seems very weird. But I guess the item is still in a point when it's playable, which is kind of... Funny because, you know, the first iteration of Ionic Spark was doing 200 true damage and it, it, it was working with Imperial. So a single Imperial creature with a buff was dealing 400 true damage uh, to an ult. And yeah, now some changes to, to ranked. There will be no losing LP for top four and uh, you will always lose LP from top five or bottom, which is okay. Remember, everyone will be starting from Iron and there will be a small... Uh, soft MMR reset, which allows people with higher rank in the previous season to, ra to rank faster, but at the same time, they will be uh, playing against better people. Now, when it comes to bug fixing, um, there's actually not that much of importance, apart from the fact that Vagar now can kill all the summons because they considered it one star, which is big, but still doesn't really help him out because Malzahar just spawns too much of them, and targeting a Tibbers is not really that easily doable uh, by Mazahar, uh, sorry, by, by uh, Vagar. Then when it comes to 
Mm, order changes. Electric trade no longer benefits from ability power and no longer feeds into a hexagon blade. That's a very big change. It was an exploit from PBE that if it would make a, an, an entrance to ranked, it would be very degenerate. Uh, since an Orn with um, ability power items like Decap and Gunblade was almost invincible. Uh, that was funny. And uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Um, oh, right. Big nerf to Diana. She only can hit one target now each. And from one of the best champions, now he, she becomes one of the, let's say, less playable. She's still very decent, but definitely not as powerful and not as auto-include into, into the name mid-game into almost every single comp. Um, Kog'Maths will hit or miss lef less often. Don't really see it much, but it uh, feels like he doesn't need to centrally hit a guy to deal the damage. It can be a hex uh, that he, a champion was moving from, so you can more reliably hit a guy. Which is okay, but in general, Kog'Maths is all about auto-attacking, not really ulting anyway. Uh, Renekton now deals magic damage, which is okay. And uh, that's about it. Malzahar got a little bit of a nerf to his minions because they reduced uh, the attack speed of it. Um, Volibear. This is a good thing to, to Volibear. Now he always gets full mana if a non, um, if if his ability killed a creature that was a non-execute. Because if you have a 3-star Volibear that deals so much damage, he can kill someone from, let's say, 75% HP, but he didn't get the full mana. So now... If you have a free star Volibear and he will chain like kills, even if there's, there's not an execute on it, which is 25% of the maximum health, it will still count, which is a considerate buff uh, to Volibear, which makes him worth of a free star upgrade. Um, and Kiana doesn't play ult when there's no one around, which is very important because that buffs, that is a considerate buff to a free star Kiana. Uh, to Sakiana as well. I mean, and Kiana, but it's it's a big buff. Not a buff, but a fix. But in general, she became way more playable. Um, then when it comes to other stuff, Asha got fixed. That's about it. Nothing really important. And that's <laughs> this is a very big buff. If I was playing very often, two cinched when I could, but I didn't realize one of them was not dealing damage because only one trait was being counted for an effect. Now that's changed. If you have two singed, both of them are dealing damage, not just one. Uh, because it doesn't... Like, the, the trade of smoke um, doesn't really count as one. And... Um, Dragon Cloak, a little, bit of a, a little bit of a buff. It affects the magic damage um, that it's getting from items and traits, which is a considered buff to Dragon Claw. Maybe if you feel like someone is playing so many static shifts and electricity that you might actually build a dragon claw which might be okay and uh yeah and that's about it inferno cinder now probably works on wrecked and drax rex vein nami's tidal wave uh so that's actually cool if you have nami with an Inferno inferno cinder when she goes with her uh with a wave Every single one of your creatures gets a buff that is hit by the wave. So now when they deal magic damage, they also attribute Inferno to their own attacks. Which is kind of cool. It will like spawn an entire map of uh, of, in of Inferno. And that's about it. Thank you very much for watching. See you guys on stream. If you liked it, leave a comment. Leave a sub. I will love you a long time.